Night Flight returns with an in-depth look at Godly and Creep right after this. Video profile of today's most innovative music directors, Kevin Godley and Lal Cree. We met um, making an amateur film of Dracula on 8mm when we were about 14, 15 years old. And I was the director, in inverted commas, and I was looking for a, a hunchback. And as everybody out there knows, there is no hunchback in Dracula, so that was our first mistake. There is now. <laughs> That's right. I was introduced to Lol as uh, actually auditioned Lol. <laughs> as uh, a prospective hunchback and he's uh, he was perfect and he's had the job ever since typecast okay. i keep the hump in a jar at my home well engagement if you like steve had just joined the, our record company with the band visage and was looking for somebody interesting to direct he didn't want to use anybody that existed already saw our storyboard and asked us if we'd work for work for him doing his first promo and uh, we did and it was a hit and uh, the rest is uh, history, huh? history. It's video history because uh, we were saying that that video had a radical effect on videos per se because it was actually acknowledged by a record company who was in doubt and speaking for the whole body of record companies in this world that, that there was any point in spending two or three thousand pounds to make a film or video clip for a, for a record when there was only two or three shows that they could get it on. 81, the controversial video for Duran Duran's Girls on Film directed attention towards Godly and Cream. It wasn't our style, it wasn't our sort of way of doing things. And when the manager came and asked us to do Duran Duran, and specifically asked for it to be a controversial video so that it would have an effect, and would we please use sex, we said yeah. I mean, we just a approached the band and, and the style of every band, every group we do. Is, I suppose, I mean, as you were saying before, we'd try and find an image or a slot for that image. I mean, I remember thinking that they were good-looking kids and they were going on that, that level, and we thought it would be good not to have them in the video too much, but by association with where they were. So, mm. in other words, because they were seen next to all these gorgeous girls, that the, it, the kudos of being in that situation would rub off on their image. A different approach for each video, at times inspired by extraordinary circumstances, as with the police's every breath you take. We saw this amazing synchronistic coincidence as it happens. We saw this, we were leaving to meet them in L.A., and the night before we left England, there was a program on television about, in the 40s, there were film jukeboxes in America, jazz, black jazz bands, and there were beautiful black and white studies of these bands, and uh, Cab Calloway and, and uh, all the, Duke Ellington, great things. And it's, we thought, that's a lovely look. The, 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 the photographer, they were using these great Hollywood cameramen and things, they looked sensational. And then that was registered. Anyway, we went to LA the next day, and Sting and, um, said, I've got something to show you. I don't want to say anything about the video, but I just want to show you something. And he took us into the back room, and he, they had, um, what was it called? Uh, he had jamming, a film, Jamming the Blues. Jamming the Blues, which was one of these clips. Can you believe it? It was one of these clips. And the rest, you know, it's like history. We agreed. <laughs> Hancock clip, Rocket. We had to find out who was this person that built these robots. And we visited his house. We visited this address in North London. My God. And what it was, is it's like a, there's a, a slum. <laughs> And there's this door, and the, the front door had these glass panes, and one of them was cracked. And we looked through this dirty, cr cracked glass, and what we saw was these a hallway with these torsos, bits of torsos and, and heads with beaks on them and hanging there. And I thought, wow, wow. This must wow. be the place. And we rang the bell, and this thing came to the door with eyes like a hatchet murderer. <laughs> Hello. And that and was Jim. It was Jim, and we, you know, it was a match made in heaven, you know. And uh, he was delighted video and play around with it and build us some of the robots that would do things specifically. TT, they're into a kind of commercial anarchy and they, they let us get in on that situation. They, they said, you know, you know, do what you want here, it doesn't matter if people are going to ban it, we'll use the fact that people are going to ban it. In fact, we're not going to let the BBC have this one. That's right. You see, it's they'd banned Relax from the BBC, so Paul Morley decided he was going to not let the BBC have this video. Do what you want. Extraordinary. 
So we did what we wanted, and it was obvious what to do. I mean, as soon as we heard the track. is to make inanimate objects come alive, as in Herbie Hancock's rocket, and go west, we close our eyes. We thought, let's see if we can create an image from scratch on this one. But we've never quite done that. With Steve, he already had his, Steve Strange already had his image together. We just enhanced it and projected it larger and brought the new romantic thing to life, if you like, for the screen. But in this case, there were two kids off the street, and they looked, I tell you, they looked so nothing. They'd never been in front of a camera before in their lives or whatever. And it was a challenge to actually see if we could bring an image from scratch. As Kev said, we tried a good deal of things before the instinct hit home and the final suggestion was take off all those clothes, get yourself greased up, try this, grab yeah, hold of this spanner. It weighed four tonnes, work with that. And he loved it, he loved it, and he came to life for the camera, which was, it was that was what was the thrill for that one. We'd actually directed somebody, you know, we'd really directed somebody and brought a potential out of them. Yeah. We're trying to surprise <laughs> our eyes, I think, all the time. We're, yes. It's part of our sort of uh, prime directive, to use a Spockism, that, um, we have to innovate all the time. I don't know why we feel that, but every time we go into a project, a film project, a video project, there has to be an element of innovation involved. I mean, we've done that with everything, even our music's like that. We, we can't help it. When Sting launched...